In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You're advised that any views expressed by the hosts or their guests are not necessarily the views of Tuggy Entertainment or its partners. Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available in both the public and private sector and we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world we'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home this is military mom talk radio and here are your hosts sandra beck and robin boyd Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. And Robin, we have a very special treat today to open the show. I can't wait to find out, Sandra. What is it? We have five kids that are standing by right here. We have Max Levin. How old are you? Eight. We have Hannah Holly, who is? Eight. We have Parker Holly, who is? Six. And we have Mac- Zach Levin, who is? Five. And we have Nick Holly, who's being a little shy. Is he going to join us? No. no. Okay. <laughs> He's four. Oh. And they have a message to bring today that they would like to say. We love our military. <laughs> and they would like to also open the show with the Pledge of Allegiance. So here is Max. Please stand. Hats off. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Red, 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 blue, I salute you. Woohoo! Thanks, wow. you guys. <laughs> That was Bye. awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> there they go. They're stars in the making. Oh, Sandra. Yeah. <laughs> what is America all about if it's not those gorgeous, wonderful little voices? <laughs> they are. And they're the reason that we're on Military Mom Talk Radio because our children are the future. Our children are the... Uh, <laughs> call them the the unsigned up enlisted members of the military (laughs) they're the ones that often have no choice and so we thought it would be really fun especially because rob i am babysitting five kids under the age of eight while having this radio show on the air (laughs) (laughs) that's a uh, purple heart in the making right there (laughs) (laughs) that is well my theory was if i can't keep them quiet maybe i can control the output so putting them on the show was a lot of fun Oh, well, it is. And and it's true. I, I have to say, I love it when we do a kid events around here because there's nothing that an adult can say that isn't going to be wonderful when it comes out of a kid. Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's, you've got some great Girl Scout information for us, don't you? No, not Girl Scout information. It was, um, I, I was on Military One Source. It's a wonderful website. If people have not visited Military One Source, you should. It is a great um, little directory of all kinds of information. And one of the things with summer coming up, um, the Boys and Girls Club of America have a wonderful military partnership. And I didn't know if some of our listeners were aware of this, and I just thought I would share it, that uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs have been providing since 1991 um, on and off installation access to youth centers and clubs around the country. And all children ages 6 through 18, whether you are um, active or reserve or um, a guard, the um, 
Girls and Boys Club do have support for you, and um, your children are able to participate in Boys and Girls Club activities free of charge if you are part of the military. And I know that they do come on installations many times, and the activities that are uh, available on uh, on a base or on a on um, on an installation are from the Boys and Girls Clubs, but if you are out in a civilian community and don't have immediate access to a youth center, you need to look up your local Boys and Girls Club because, yes, your children can participate at no cost. So um, if you want more information, it's um, certainly go to militaryonesource.mil, um, which is where I found it, and that's uh, the number one spelled out, Military One Source. Mill, but you also can call the Boys Club and Girls Boys and Girls Club of America, and that's at one eight hundred eight five four two five eight two. And I just thought that that would be really cool with summer summer coming up. That is. That's so important because, as we all know, especially some more than others today, finding child care <laughs> during that, the summer. Did I not get the vibe that we had to talk about child care today? <laughs> you got it all the way from Los Angeles to New Hampshire, baby. That was coming across loud and clear. It's true. And I think every summer, is, it's, no matter what your family circumstances summer is wonderful because you get away from the school but you also need to engage your kids during the summer and if you're a working mom that's a very difficult thing to do it is it is and it's hard to concentrate it's hard to focus for me (laughs) you know because i want to be out in the pool i want to be out playing with my kids and you know but duty calls and we know we have to do that um rob i'm going to bring jody on early dr jody bramer because we have two fans Yeah, we have two fantastic guests today. We have Dr. Jody Bramer, who's been a regular on our show. Uh, She is a psychologist specializing in military family issues. She always comes on with great things. And then we have Jennifer Berman, and she is a Southern California resident who's going to talk to us about transitioning from a military civilian life with respect to real estate. Uh, Because there's a lot of jobs out there uh, in the real estate industry and the associated industries, especially with the foreclosures with the bank issues um, and people who have served in the military have such great attention to detail they can slide uh, right into those positions or we're going to do everything possible to rid that 60 percent I think is where it is for men right now in unemployment when leaving the military 80 percent for women so we have put together the small business expo of bringing together experts so that we can help you transition into your civilian life and be financially successful great Great. So it sounds better each week when I do that, doesn't it? (laughs) The first week I was like, and now it's like by the end of the, you know, 10 weeks, we'll have it down. That's right. That's right. And I think it's great to have Jody come on before the break because I know she's got a lot we to to cover. So let's say hi to Jody. Hi, Jody. Hi, guys. (laughs) What a lot of great information you're bringing on today. This is great. Yeah, you're wonderful. Oh. <laughs> well, I've been waiting a year for a guest to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's just so much going on with the comings and goings and the different um, uh, military uh, posts and and the, the attention that's being paid to things like what you're bringing up with Boys and Girls Club and the summer programs and the need for all the support for the military, both in transition. This is great stuff. It is. It is. And, and Jody, you have really your finger on the pulse of a lot of what our military families are going through. And I know in the past we've had you talk about PTSD. We had a PTSD roundtable with you and Fuzzy Manning. So for those of you who miss. Oh, are we losing Sandra? Sometimes that happens. Um, Jody, I know that you have uh, so. So check out iTunes or Military oh, Mom Talk Radio or Toginet.com. Am I back? Uh, now I think you're back, San. We lost oh, okay. everything that you were saying. But let's go on with what <laughs> Jody was on. No problem. <laughs> Jody's connection is good. Let's have Jody talk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Oh, are, is it what that are way? Military I've... families. What are mo- the most common things you see our military families struggling with in your therapy treatments, so that our listeners know what are some things that they can go and get help for and not feel so alone? Oh gosh, um, when you were talking about military one force a minute ago, I was sitting on the other end of here thinking this is the number one place to go for just about everything. They cover uh, child care, they cover shopping, they cover um, finances, and, and honestly, a lot of times when people come in for therapy, they're coming in for one of the top three stressors, and money, of course, is the number one stressor, especially in young military families. We're talking about not even knowing how to make it from paycheck to paycheck. So even though the idea of coming in for counseling or therapy often is about communication or, or marital issues, a lot of times it comes down to figuring out budgets and finances and even just for the first time combining assets or learning how to live on a modified paycheck, especially if one of the people aren't working in the family. There are so many resources that can be um, given to young military families and even older military families. Military One Force is an excellent resource, but there are so many programs available on each independent military uh, base. Uh, Not only is the commissary and the exchange possibly a good place to go, but they have all sorts of of, um, programs that are dedicated to helping that a lot of people don't know about or take advantage of. There are free giveaways, free clothing giveaways, free diaper giveaways. Uh, these are some major stressors when I'm working with young families, and, and they really don't even know how to um, make it from paycheck to paycheck. There are programs for child care. There are programs for um, budgeting. They can teach you how to make a budget, write a budget. Surprisingly enough, sometimes that's even what we do on our own um, in our own counseling sessions is create a household budget, which will definitely alleviate some of the stress. And so many times, Jody, um, it's probably just a small thing that is going to um, create a bigger stress. <laughs> It'll start out with something small, but the stress just exacerbates everything else. And oh, yes. I think so many times being able to sit down with someone like you is so important because all they need to do is just sort of get down to the root and then say, all right, let's just fix this one route. And it could be just some financial issue. Jody, on the other side of the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this and talk a little bit more about the importance of family counseling. Stay with us, Jody. I'll be here. And great. We'll be right back on Military Mom Talk Radio. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to be a rock star. Get ready to rock with Rock Talk and Craig Deswalt and learn how to achieve rock star status in your industry every Tuesday afternoon at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Craig Deswalt is the creator of the Rock Star System for Success. Craig will share easy tips and strategies on how entrepreneurs and businesses can use outside-the-box marketing strategies to stand out from the competition. Each high-energy show will feature interviews with celebrity rock stars as well as business rock stars. For more on Craig, the show, and the Rockstar Marketing Boot Camps, check out the website, Craig Doeswalt, D-U-S-W-A-L-T dot com, so you can learn how to be perceived as an expert and celebrity in your field, so more people come to you to buy your services and products. Then, get ready to be a rock star with Rock Talk and Craig Doeswalt. Tuesday afternoons at 2, 1 Central on Tugginet.com. Fertility is an extremely personal subject. Tune in Monday nights at 9, 8 Central for the Fertility Forum with infertility psychotherapist and expert Phyllis Martin on Tugginet.com. This is the show about infertility, gaining support, and information. Phyllis will assist you in navigating the disappointments and decisions that often accompany the difficult journey from diagnosis to conception, pregnancy to parenthood. She is passionate about her work and is an expert in the donor egg field, bringing both her personal and professional experience to all she does. 
Ms. Martin has extensive experience in helping patients cope with infertility, pregnancy loss, adoption, surrogacy, miscarriage, pregnancy termination, and creative family building. She knows what you're going through, and she's here to help. It's the Fertility Forum with your host, Phyllis Martin, Monday nights at 9, 8 central on toginet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name at the top of his list and a statue of liberty started shaking. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Mamas, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd for Military Mom Talk Radio, and we are welcoming Dr. Jody Bramer. She comes on regularly to talk to us about military family issues. And Jody, the one I want to bring up today, because uh, I think it affects everybody, military or not, but specifically with the downsizing and everything going on in the military, how come when people are having trouble, it's not so bad when you have a lot of money, but when you, <laughs> when you have no money or you're trying to live on one salary, um, it's just a disaster because it seems to, I don't know if it magnifies everything. What happens when the money runs out with the problems that we already have? Like, does oh, that make sense? Goodness. Oh, absolutely. Money is oftentimes the number one instigator of crisis in marriage and it usually it can it can be just a symptom of other things that are going on we're talking control issues we're talking dominance we're talking uh major decisions um control is the big one if somebody is the money maker the breadwinner oftentimes that person will feel that they have more right to control where money goes or how money goes. And there can be all sorts of dynamics in a relationship. The person who stays home and takes care of the household has every bit as much um, uh, responsibility as the person who goes out and earns a living oftentimes. In fact, I think there was one study done that showed um, stay-at-home moms in in relation to everything that they do, if they were paid a, an adequate salary for everything they do, from chauffeur to nurse to everything, they'd be earning like 135000 a year, um, yet they're not compensated in any financial way. And then we have the breadwinner who makes the money and oftentimes isn't necessarily the best at controlling the money. So the person who is in charge of paying the bills and pay, making, making sure everything is met is trying to dole out what little there is, and the person who's making the money says, well, you know what, I make the money, I want to go buy an Xbox, or I make the money, I, I want to go spend it on this, this, and this, and, and you don't have any right to say because you're not making the money. But in a marriage, especially in a marriage, it's a partnership, and people have to come into a marriage knowing that things aren't going to be necessarily 50-50 in every single aspect of the marriage. One person may earn more. One person may take on more responsibility in a certain area. And this is where it goes beyond just loving and living together, but actually working out the relationship of um, partnership and doing things fairly and playing on each other's strengths and supporting each other's weaknesses. And that's where money can be a huge umbrella of stress and factoring into all sorts of different areas in a marriage and provide the conflict as well. Yeah, because it magnifies it. It just makes it worse. Absolutely. And when we have the control issues of somebody making money and the other person not or somebody making more money than the other person, we have this idea in our society that whoever makes more money is more in charge. And for so many families, that doesn't work out well. It doesn't mm. work out well, especially when you're working with um, mothers of, of young children who who need to know that there's going to be enough money at the end of the paycheck or the pay period or even the end of the day to put gas in the car or to put diapers on little bottoms and things like that. And there's priorities. There's okay, are we going to pay for food or are we going to 
buy a six pack of beer. There's which can create all sorts of other issues. So we're looking at a lot of different issues in the marriage that can be created or conflicted about money. Well, yeah, because when you don't have money, you get afraid. And when you get afraid, you try to control things. I mean, that's just human nature. And I can only imagine, because I I think of my jarhead friends going, (laughs) if they're not the breadwinner, you know, like when they transition and their wife's the breadwinner, I think of a couple friend of mine, they were both Marines, and then they transitioned, she got a job right away, and he didn't. And my God, there was all sorts of havoc in that household, because he was used to calling the shots, making the money, you know, even though they were both Marines, he was higher ranked than she was in longer standing. He's a first sergeant, and um, it was brutal. Oh, absolutely. I mean, who is in charge? Who is in control? Where, where are the roles? Where are the proper roles? Back in the olden days, the roles were clear. The man went out and earned a living, the woman stayed home, and then when we're doing this transitioning and the dual career paths and we have this, this dual-income family, if we're lucky and we have enough money to, to bring in both, where where are the boundaries? Where are the roles? Who's expected to do what? And, of course, therein lies more conflict. Is it your job to unload the dishwasher and do a load of laundry? Well, no, I just got home from work. So we've got a whole lot of a, other slew of issues that are all tied to this this communication, this, this partnership, this, this need for structure and working together. The Marines well, can do it. The Navy can do it. The, the Army can do it. Families have to do it. Well, it's hard. I mean, I know, especially like Robin was in a different generation than I was. I think roles might have been more defined for her, Robin. I hope I'm not mm. speaking on <laughs> No, fairly. no, no. I, I'm old. You can say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, actually, what I was going to say is beyond the, the maybe the man role and the, and the woman role, you also have human nature. And we want to sort of have some control or say in what happens to us. We want to wear, we, we do have control over what color we dye our hair. We have control over what book we're, we're wearing. But when all, reading I mean, but when all of a sudden you don't have control over your, over what's going to happen to you, your destiny. If you don't have the finances to do something, you're, you then become vulnerable. And when you become vulnerable, you put up the, the wall and you become defensive. And that defensiveness is then going to create a barrier. And once you set up barriers, then there's no communication. So it's just, that's, the beginning of the domino that just you you need to get to that root before that wall is just um, uh, unmanageable. Robin, well, yeah, and that wall so stays right. it stays up so long, and then you become resentful. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, and I saw it. I know in my marriage, you know, the roles weren't defined because my husband expected a traditional wife, and then I went to work for sixteen hours a day, and then he was frustrated. I wouldn't come home and cook and clean, and you know, be Susie homemaker for I don't know the last four hours I had before I passed oh. out. <laughs> you know, and that resentment builds. Absolutely, and vulnerability, Robin, you hit on that as well. Which one is the vulnerable partner, and is, does vulnerability play a role in the marriage? What are the roles? What are the, what are the decisions that are going to be made? You're, you're, you're so right in that. Well, who is the vulnerable one, though? Like, because I look at it, it's like it kind of sucks on both ends. You know, you've got the control freak and you've got the one with no power, but both of them are functioning from vulnerability. Oh, my goodness. Are you sure you didn't do psychology before? (laughs) (laughs) No, I just lived it. I was like thinking, you know, man, I was a train wreck. My ex was, you know, hanging from the ceiling. I mean, it was it was it was bad for both of us. I don't think there was any like Jody, there wasn't anything in the mix that was good about it. It doesn't sound like you work together. It doesn't sound like a partnership. And oftentimes when people go into marriage, they're they're starstruck, they're they're lovey-dovey. They don't realize that this is something that once that lust fades, this is something that two people are in together, ideally with the idea of working together for future. There are so many conflicts inherent just in marriage, just in the partnership of marriage. But then when you throw in all the military factors as well and you talk about oh, my gosh, this is a whole other segment, but deployment and reintegration and living 
separately but being married and growing apart, we've got a lot of conflict here. Who's going to handle the bills and uh, who's going to take care of the issues and how are things going to be managed when people come back together? This is, mm-hmm. um, this is just a, a burden that so many of our military people and, and everybody is, is unprepared to handle when they first come together. It sounds romantic. It's a romantic idea of, of oh, I love you, let's get married. But the reality is, is that there's so many stresses that are inherent, and they, they do need to be addressed. And that's why the idea of premarital counseling, the idea of counseling while you're going through the good stages where everybody is in agreement for everything. This is, this is a good time not to come into counseling when, when things are already falling apart and you already are, are so, feeling so negative toward your partner. How would it have gone for you if you had gone for counseling at the good stages? I Probably a lot different. You know, I don't know, Jody. I mean, I just know that flying blind and feeling all these things that we talk about on the show today, if I had known some of these things were red flags, like what Rob was talking about and what you were talking about, you know, it probably would have ended up differently. I know definitely if if it was going to end, it wouldn't have been as nasty as it was because it, huh. it just went way too far. Absolutely. And when people do think of marital or premarital counseling, they think of the religious factors. But it doesn't have to involve just religion. In fact, it doesn't have to involve religion at all. It's just kind of sitting down with parents that you actually love and respect and honor, that whole idea of, okay, what can I get, get from you? What can I gain from you that I may not be thinking about to enter into this knowledgeably with enough resources that I can go into this? And if there's a conflict, which there will be, we all know that every life has conflict, what do we do about it? How do we manage it? Because right now we're in a conflict-free zone of love and happiness and, and engagement or whatever. How do we deal with the problems if and when they occur? How do you know when to go? Like, like, do you go with the first sign of trouble? Do you, like, you know, people listening today might resonate and go, wow, that sounds like me, or I felt that way, or I feel that way, or, you know, Rob's great vulnerability thing. You know, when do you know to pick up the phone? Oftentimes when you know to pick up the phone, it's, it's really past time to pick up the phone. But that's okay, because even if it's past time, there's still things that can be addressed. There's times that I get calls and, and somebody says, I know I should have come for counseling earlier, now my husband and I are talking about divorce. Um, what do we do? And uh, first thing is, come in. Let's come in and talk about it. Whatever direction you go in, let's get some help and help you go in that direction more easily. Jody, we're going to have to say goodbye for now. You're always so wonderful. You give us such insight, and it always makes us feel better to go and face the world. So, Jody Bramer, thank you, thank for you having so me. much. On thank the you. other side of the break, we're going to meet Jennifer Berman. Uh, she brings her unique coaching abilities to the table with her agents and now to us on Military Mom Talk Radio. Stay tuned. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Have you been laid off? Fired, downsized, right-sized, or re-engineered out of a job? Are you unemployed or anticipate that possibility? Then tune in for Successfully Unemployed, hosted by Alan Sherwood, MBA, president of Sherwood Consulting Service. Successfully Unemployed will provide you a hope-filled and comprehensive approach to the job search process from an author who's experienced it all. Alan and his guests will cover all dimensions of a job search, physical tasks, mental attitude, emotional health, even one spiritual perspective. All must be integrated in order for a person to be successfully unemployed so they can then be successfully employed. This show is designed to help you move forward from job loss to finding or creating more fulfilling work. For more on Alan Sherwood, MBA, and the show, check out his website, SuccessfullyUnemployed.com. Then join us for Successfully Unemployed with Alan Sherwood, MBA. Thursday nights at 8, 7 central here on Toginet.com. Congratulations on being the proud owner of an adorable, soft, cuddly, sweet-smelling, smiling, cooing, hungry, tired, gassy, screaming little bundle of joy. So now what? Where's the owner's manual for this thing? Where are my instructions? Right here. It's baby and toddler instructions with Blythe Lipman on toginet.com. Infant care specialist Blythe Lipman has worked with babies for over 20 years. 
and works extensively with new parents providing workshops, in-home visits, tips, and daily phone calls to ease those frazzled nerves. With baby and toddler instructions, you can get the advice you need on how to survive and enjoy your baby's first year. For more information on Blythe and how she can help you, go to babyinstructions.com. From 32 ways to stop a baby from crying to 14 ways to get a baby to eat and so much more, it's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lipman on toginet.com. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, we're about halfway through our show. For those of you just joining us, you missed a great segment with Dr. Jody Bramer. You can pick us up on iTunes. You can pick us up on Military Mom Talk Radio, Motherhood Talk Radio. You can also listen to her previous shows about PTSD and some of the other shows we've had um, about our counseling issues. And, you know, Rob... It's so interesting to me when I think of you and I think of me and then I think of your daughter, Emily, who's newly married, Mm -hmm. um, how different the roles are for us and how ill-defined they are, especially today. I know for me, you know, I was like the first generation of really full-time working, educated, successful, powerful, right. you know, that whole 80s, you know, 90s right. mentality thing. Mm-hmm. And that kind of turned the traditional marriage upside down because for the first time in history, a lot of these women were making more money than men. Right, right. And, um, and now it's I look at Rob. Well, I was going to say it's interesting because, say, during World War II, when women were back in um, in back at the states doing all of the jobs that the men couldn't do because they were all deployed, and then immediately the war ended, the men came back, the women immediately went into uh, a domestic role, and then it was so difficult for them to come back into the workforce. But I think it's it's. Um, it's a wonderful generation. I, I look at what my daughter is facing and the choices for younger women now are just tremendous. And not that I didn't ever feel empowered as a younger woman. I did. I felt, and I'm fortunate that my mother brought me up that way. She said, whatever you need to do. And I have to say, my Girl Scouting background gave me that confidence too. But now it's okay for women to make their lives the way they want it. And I just encourage women to say, all right, where do I want to go? And be strong and be able to say, I can do it. And there's help somewhere. If you can't figure out how to do it, there's someone who's going to be your mentor and someone who's going to get you there. Rob, that's so great. I mean, that's you always have such a beautiful way of putting these things. And, you know, that's why we brought Jennifer Berman on today. Um, you know, Jennifer is going to bring to us some opportunities uh, specific to the real estate industry, you know, because everybody needs houses. Everybody needs a place to live. There's a real estate office in every neighborhood, every town, every city. Um, and it's, a, you know, even though the market is challenging right now, there are a lot of good jobs and it's a really good job uh, for women. And so we want to bring her on and talk about that, um, you know, for our transitioning uh, women coming out of the military and for our military wives and moms out there whose husbands are transitioning out of the military. Uh, Jen, are you with us? I am. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Robin. Hello. Welcome. Well, thank you. I tell you guys, this really, you know, comes close to my heart, uh, listening to everything that you guys said. Um, I'm in the age range of 40, and I'm an Air Force brat. My my whole family is a high in the in the Air Force, so we moved around all of our lives. Everybody has, and those roles have changed. I know, especially in my generation. And you come out and you get into these jobs and you start making money, and it's just it's kind of a a weird way to kind of transition into the workforce and then into the family force. Um, you know, real estate has just been an amazing way to. When you get into investing, you go to different places. You actually can travel around and still get into real estate. And I think that's why it's been something I've been trying to get out to the women in the military. Sandra, you and I talked about it because the percentage 
of women getting out and into the workforce are having such a high, difficult time. I think it's around 80% as opposed to men at 60%. Don't quote me on those figures, but it's, it's astronomical. Um, and it's like, where do we go? Where do we fit in? And real estate can absolutely be that way for women, for sure, for, for anybody. Um, there's so many different, you know, ways to get into real estate, administrative assistance. There's escrow. There's mortgage. It's not just about selling homes. There's, you know, it's, it's a complete roundabout industry. Well, and Jennifer, uh, you know, being a military brat, I mean, you can attest to the fact that there is a lot of need for real estate in the military because everybody's always moving from one place to another. They're, you know, buying a home, selling a home. They might be renting the home that they bought at this base when they moved to another base. That whole transition thing, I mean, there's military housing offices on base. I mean, housing's a big deal for the military, so it's not unreasonable that, um, you know, military military families would specialize in real estate? Well, you know, we're close to Camp Pendleton. And one of the things that we do here is we deal with a lot of of military folks, obviously, being out this way. Um, You you actually can because, right, you're talking to people all the time that are moving. What about the investment opportunity? If you get people together and go buy properties and build a portfolio that way, there's, there's, it's more than just buying and the selling of, of, of real estate, right? So Absolutely. I don't think that there's, it, it's, it's not really covered out to the military of how we could get into the real estate industry. And I think that's what I'm trying to get out as a national speaker to talk to people about. Um, we're in Southern California and at First Team Real Estate, that's where I'm at. It's firstteam.com. We're the number one in relocation in Southern California. Well, who isn't relocating in the military? <laughs> so you open up a whole new resource just within the military itself. Now, Jennifer, there's lots of different jobs available. You know, when people think of real estate, they just generally think of, oh, a real estate agent, maybe I don't want to sell. I mean, what are some of the other jobs that are needed? You kind of mentioned a few in the beginning, but what are some of the jobs that are available for military personnel within the real estate industry? Well, administrative assistance. I don't think that that's looked at. It's not that everybody has to get out there and, and sell real estate and be the salesperson. Um, all of our salespeople, well, not all of them, but, you know, the majority of the top producers, they have to have administrative assistance. Those are people that would never want to – they don't want to get out there and go sell homes. It's just not in their DNA. It's not what excites them. Um, but they need somebody that can do the in-office in administrative work. Also, we have escrow and we have title, which is two different entities where we're at in the Orange County, Los Angeles area. So there's escrow officers, um, there's mortgage lenders, there's people that work for the real estate companies itself. I mean, we have, you know, about 100 people that are staff that don't sell real estate that are in our company alone. So it's, it's not just all about sales. Well, and there's marketing positions open. You know, if you're somebody who likes marketing or advertising, you know, you can make brochures, you can uh, put ads in newspapers, social media is a big, big part of real estate. Um, And that's something a lot of companies are outsourcing for moms to do from homes. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Jen? Absolutely, because we need content, local area content that's going to be written. And that actually can be from anyone traveling anywhere around the United States. It doesn't, you don't have to live in Orange County to go research on the internet what's happening in, in Anaheim or in Newport Beach. You could be living in Rhode Island and research that. Everything's by the internet. So our agents that are out in the field, they don't have time to go on and post something on Twitter and on Facebook and have the SEO getting back to their blog and their their websites for the local content that must be found when these real estate agents are expected to be local uh, area experts. So absolutely, we are constantly looking for people that, you know, can write well or research well on the Internet, find this information for us. Very important. Well, and these jobs are virtual. They can be done anywhere in the country. Well, it's marketing. You just touched on that. I mean, we desperately need somebody. Uh, We're always looking for people that could do some graphic design work for us. Just time blocking to get their marketing materials out. So one of the printing houses that we use, and that's an example of somebody that's remote anywhere in the country could do for our agents, 
we, they could go to one of our printing houses, they upload the document online, and then for five extra dollars, that printing company just FedExes it over to the agent. So absolutely not necessary for somebody to be sitting in an office with the real estate agent. It's a huge need today. So let me get this straight. So you could be living in, like, let's say, Bethesda, Maryland, assuming mm-hmm. you could afford to live there. So you'd be in Bethesda, Maryland, and you could be writing blog copy. You could be doing research. You could be designing a website or designing some sort of marketing piece, a brochure or something in um, Maryland for mm-hmm. a real estate agent that lives in Southern California and send those files over the internet to the printer who then sends the hard copy stuff to the agent and it works. It absolutely works. And, you know, it's that's something that we definitely want to get in and get to the military moms and, and support them and really work with them as opposed to getting a college kid that's local that's going to go get, you know, an, another job that's going to be more stable here. It's more uh, – there's more incentive for us to, to be with somebody that is remote, that that's an, an easy career choice for them. Well, and savvy, a savvy military mom like that might acquire five or six real estate clients and have a really nice little business going in their home in wherever their husband gets transferred or their, they move can take that with them because it's all internet based. Well, and what we use as our contact management system to run our business is on the internet. So again, Having that face-to-face time just is not necessary. And where we're at in Orange County and Los Angeles, we use transaction coordinators. Um, it's probably not quite the same as it is across the country. It's, it's actually better for us because somebody sits in our office and does the paper shuffling. So we don't need that because it's already in the office. What we're desperately needing is exactly somebody that's remote, that's on the Internet. It doesn't matter what time of day that they're doing the marketing brochures or they're getting flyers created. It's completely irrelevant. They can do it at any time. So the time zone factor is irrelevant for us. Oh, were you going to say something, San? Uh, well, I was just going to say, you know, I want to thank you, um, Jen, because you really showed us how, you know, it looks, what the picture looks like when somebody works virtually for another person around the country. Um, because we talk about virtual assistants, we talk about that, we use that word a lot, but sometimes it's hard when it's a new concept to really wrap your brain around it. Rob, you want to right. take us to break? I am. Uh, we On the other side of the break, Jen's going to have a little bit more to talk about as far as taking some steps to launch uh, a career when you all of a sudden are in a place where you just don't know uh, where to begin. So many times when we PCS, we are plunked into a, a new neighborhood, and it's very difficult sometimes to find resources in that new neighborhood. So, Jen, I hope you can give us a little insight on uh, getting brave and picking up a phone or t- typing in something, and, and uh, a lot of things are done virtually when you're looking for new opportunities. So we'll ask Jen a little bit about that on the other side of the break. Stay tuned with more Military Mom Talk Radio. Be back in a moment. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Thursday nights, get ready for the Read My Lips Tips for Success radio show with your host, Linnea Millette, at 11, 10 Central on Toginet.com. What are the Read My Lips Tips for Success? Well, it's spelled out like this. R. Realize it is possible. E. Embrace all relationships. A. Advance through adversity. D. Develop your significance. M. Manage your health and wealth. Y. Yield to your natural abilities. L. Listen to your heart. I. Invest in yourself. P. Persist by taking small steps. And S. Serve others. Each week on the show, you'll find a safe haven whereby tips, insights, and strategies are shared by Linnea and her guests. Go to Linnea's website, readmylipstips.com. Then join us Thursday nights at 11, 10 p.m. Central for the Read My Lips Tips for Success radio show with your host, Linnea Millette, on toginet.com. Everyday Autism Miracles with Shannon Pinrock. 
Friday afternoons at 2, 1 central on toginet.com. Life after an autism spectrum diagnosis doesn't have to be difficult. It can be joyful, happy, and filled with hope. Join Shannon Penrod, author, speaker, coach, and mom of a six-year-old recovering from autism for this inspirational hour of hope. She's even authored a series of children's autism books with her son, Jim. For more information about the books, Shannon, and Everyday Autism Miracles, go to her website, shannonpenrod.com. From there, you can also get to her other websites, blogs, and connections. On Everyday Autism Miracles, you'll hear stories from parents whose children have made miraculous strides. You'll also get the inside dish on therapies, treatments, supplements, and how to get funding to help you afford them. Miracles abound in the autism community. So tune in for Everyday Autism Miracles to listen, share, laugh, and surround yourself with hope. Everyday Autism Miracles with Shannon Penrod. Friday afternoons at 2, 1 central on Toginet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help a sound, put your name at the top of his list and a statue. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and our guest today is Jennifer Berman, and she is a specialist who helps real estate agents and associates get started in the business. She's located in Southern California, and her site, if you want to check her out, is firstteam.com, like the number one first, uh, www.firstteam.com. They cover San Diego, Los Angeles, and Orange County. Uh, but what Jennifer has to bring to us to the table today is about how to get started in real estate, whether you want to be an agent or support staff and assistant, whether you want to be in the banking side of it, the title side of it. For some of you listening today, your states have escrow. Other ones handle it uh, through an attorney. Um, there are a lot of opportunities out there for the transitioning military family to enter into real estate beyond an investor. As somebody who works in that career, we talked a little bit about the use of virtual assistance. That means you're working for somebody in another state. You may or may not ever meet them in person, but because of electronic transfer, phone, fax, and internet, you can actually be doing support work for these real estate agents. Now, Jennifer, how does somebody get started when they want to do do this we've got somebody living in a state they just moved there um, where do they begin where they would go first well obviously if you're in Southern California or Orange County we're the number one out here so you'd go to firstteam.com we definitely want to uh, talk to you on that if it's around the country I would go to realtor.com realtor.com is the number one real estate website in the world and what you'll typically find is you'll see a, a broker that just keeps coming up over and over perhaps in your their area name it might comes be up over and over well yeah but it would be like Coldwell banker there may be different other agents in there but you want to see okay. the broker's name that keeps coming up not necessarily just the agent it's it's kind of a twofold question um, is it a great so thing to try and be listening today? A broker is the company that hires the salespeople because I don't think a lot of people nationwide know the difference between broker and real estate agent because a lot of times right. we use them interchangeably. So do you want to explain the difference right. between the two? Sure. So if you're looking at Coldwell Banker, Prudential, Remax, Keller Williams, those are brokers. First team real estate, that's a broker. An agent would be Sally Smith that you see working at Coldwell Banker. So that would be a direct agent. You may see a Sally Smith name come up on several different listings. That shows you that Sally Smith is a top real estate agent. Perhaps she might be looking for a virtual assistant or an administrative assistant. So that could be a way of going about it. If you're in a city and you want to become an agent, then I would go to who the broker is that you're seeing going in your neighborhood, uh, where you're driving, what signs do you see out uh, for open house signs on the weekend. When you go to the newspaper, what what name keeps coming up, meaning is it Coldwell Banker, is it, is it Remax, is it Keller Williams, who is it? That would be the broker. And then you call their local number, and then you ask to speak with their manager to make an appointment. Um, and that's what we're trying to do out here. We definitely want to get military moms and try and get them into the real estate market out here in Orange County. 
Um, you know, when I got started, Sandra, it wasn't I was a licensed real estate agent, but it didn't mean that I had to go in and be a, real, a, a residential real estate agent. I wanted to be nationwide. I didn't want to live in one central location. As an Air Force brat, I wasn't used to being in one location, so that never appealed to me. Um, I got on with a contact management system, and we later went public with Realtor.com, and that's how I became an executive with Realtor.com and traveled all throughout the country. Now, later on, when I found somewhere where I wanted to live, which is in Los Angeles, then I became an office manager. So it just kind of shows you that it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a residential real estate agent. There are different opportunities that you may not think of in, in, in real estate. Well, and real estate's a great job for women. Can you talk about, um, you know, especially having kids? I know I brought my kids to showings. I've brought my dogs to showings. You know, I've, I've brought them to open houses, you name it, inspections, you know, and I'm not a licensed agent. I just, for, you know, my business, sure. I had to show up at these things. Um, but it's a really family friendly career. Absolutely. I mean, I'm one of the top recruiters, you know, in real estate. I've hired hundreds of agents. And I got to tell you, you know, I'll take a single mom that has her children that's going to get out there in the neighborhoods and walk around with the dog and, and with the with the child in the in the stroller and meeting neighbors and talking to neighbors. When you're selling real estate, this is a people business. It's, it's building relationships. And when you're in neighborhoods, what else is in neighborhoods? Other people with children most of the time. So when you, when you have that connection, then, you know, the mothers are more, more apt to be out there and, and walking around in the neighborhood and talking to people. And it just becomes easy. And then it becomes word of mouth on, on who to use. Jen, I mean, there may be uh, many opportunities for staff, but if someone really is interested in real estate, how difficult is it to be licensed, say, in one state, and then if all of a sudden you're relocated uh, across country, is it uh, like starting all over again? I think many well, it times, depends. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, that depends they, because there's not there's a lot of states that don't have that don't have mortgage. They're what are called attorney states. So we have a mortgage state, so our, our licensing can, can be a little different because of the factors that we have with the government. Now, there are some states, if you're, for instance, you're in Texas, you can be grandfathered, uh, grandfathered in if you move to Oklahoma. So I still think it's that way today. Um, yeah. It just depends on where you're at. And to go online, that's what we're talking about with virtual assistants, you know, in real estate. Well, it's the same thing with getting licensing. Just go online and then put in real estate license plus your city name where you're at, and then you'll find several schools that you can go take a look at. You know, I most don't, of the time, I often a, wondered. most of the time, a tip also is there's no problem to go and sit with like if like going back to Realtor.com, finding a local broker, or you see in your neighborhood where you're at, you see a a first team real estate sign as a, as an example. Call that number to one of the offices. Say, hey, can I come in and sit at one of your team meetings? All the real estate companies do a team meeting every single week. That's where all the agents come in, and it's like that one opportunity weekly where you get to hear all the agents, and that's like the office team meeting. So it would be a great way. I hire people like this all the time. I say, you know what, if you're not sure about getting, oh, yeah, if you're not sure about getting into real estate, come to my team meeting, fill it out, listen to the other agents, and see what you feel. If there, you start getting a feeling that that's something you want to do, then let's pursue it, and then I help them go to school. Really? And then, yeah, and if not, I've helped people. One lady came in. She did it. She ended up short-selling her own home. <laughs> she had a child with special <laughs> you know, needs. I would just feel had so sell. forward doing that, but that's an no. okay thing to do, huh? Yeah, because, wow. you know, you've got to have the, the fire in the belly to want to be able to do something, and that's the cool thing about the, this industry. If it's something that you think that you don't want to do, there's other avenues, but without being in that real estate office first or taking some of the classes, you're never going to know that. And for, like, $200 to take the real estate classes, like, through one of the brokers, mm-hmm. it just makes sense to say, hey, you know what? I do want to be an administrative assistant. Hey, what is this virtual assistant thing? How can I get started on that? Well, and that's so smart, Jennifer, because, you know, I was in real estate for 15 years. I didn't have a license, but I loved homes. I loved to walk through Mm -hmm. people's homes. I loved to look in their closets. Yes, I would open up their makeup drawer, see what they're wearing. I mean, I was the 
biggest nosy person, not in any bad way. I just love to look at people's stuff. What books do they have? What do they have in their office? You know, Curiosity. what foods in their fridge? I mean, it was the best part of my day. And I went through Brentwood, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, some yeah, of the most, sure. you know, amazing people in the world. I remember George Burns was colorblind and his, whoever yeah. was handling his shirts and ties had put a little label maker and there was like white shirts, gray shirts, blue shirts, you know, and then he had his ties hung up, works with blue, works with gray. It was fascinating. I didn't want to sell the home. I just wanted to walk around, take pictures and video <laughs> and look at people's stuff. Well, you know, it's hilarious on that because I, like I said, I'm one of probably one of the top recruiters. I hired a ton of agents in this industry and I kid you not, the women that I had that would come in and do that and could talk, do you know who my most successful people are? They were school teachers. They're divorced moms. They're, they were hairdressers because they like to get out there. I could have a lender. Remember when the market crashed? We all remember that. I could have a lender that used to make $500,000 annually, a million dollars annually, and say, okay, I've been licensed 20 years. I want to get in real estate. I kid you not, I would not hire them. They would not make a good real estate agent. I'll take a mom rocking with her stroller that loves to go look at houses any day of the week because it is a different kind of mindset that makes you connect with somebody to sell or buy, purchase their home. Wow. Fascinating. Fasc so you, you, hired you me don't know. I told you I like to poke in people's homes. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would. But you're also probably more diligent to keep getting out there and being consistent doing it. And that's the key to this business. So absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and that's something with people that are in the military. That's one reason why for me, I've been doing this for years, and I've been a national speaker. I've been all over the country. I know when I hire people who's going to be good and who isn't. And one of the things why I'm so dead set right now to really trying to help military moms is because when you're in the military, you have to be consistent. You have to be determined. You have to, if I can show you what to do, then you're going to make it work and you're going to do it. I cannot even begin to tell you how many people do not have that common trait, characteristic trait, that are trying to get in the workforce today. Has anybody ever tried to hire, like, uh, somebody in our the other generation, the 20-year-olds? I'm just curious. Because I oh, can yeah, tell you right brutal. now. They kill me every time. They don't come I mean, in. other than being hot and, like, going, wow, you're like <laughs> man candy. It's they like, next, yeah. because you have no work ethic, you're, you've been so entitled, None. you've been given everything, yeah. and it's I, brutal. I have hired, I swear to you, you can ask my agents, at least 40 of these kids. I, they come in. I try. I tried. I said, well, let's go to the colleges. Let's get these interns. Let's get them in. We'll give them a job. We'll give them insurance. Isn't this what they need when they're spending $25,000 for a semester? You think they would show up. They're not oh. there. Jennifer, thinking, it has been so fun yeah. meeting you. And I can't tell you how <laughs> excited everyone in our audience has got to be right now because of all of you you've given us today. Please yeah, check good. out Jennifer Berman at firstteam.com. It's been a delight meeting you. And thank you for that encouragement because I think we're all going to go out and just get it done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you so much, you guys. Oh, well, Sandra, it's been a great show. And I want to remind everybody next week, we have Bob Corcoran coming back. He uh, was a bundle of inspiration for us uh, a few weeks back. He is with um, uh, Corcoran Consulting and Coaching. You don't want to miss that. And we also have um, Autumn autumn arnold me, joining us next week uh, she's a wellness coach a diet and fitness tip person all around mommy wellness person so boy is does that sound like a great show sandra it's been a great one today thanks so much thanks rob see ya see you next week